space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds and seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. You know, I know it's said official Star Trek Beyond trailer, but I gotta tell you, I don't remember any of that in the movie. Welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker back with you, and today we're talking about Star Trek Beyond. Uh, but before we get there, we're going to have a drink first, because you should always start with a drink. And what we're having today is Andorian Ale, the classic Star Trek drink. And what Andorian Ale is, uh, muddled with a mint leaf, muddled, uh, half measure of simple syrup, one measure of blue curacao and two measures of uh, raspberry, either vodka or rum. Today, in this instance, I'm using raspberry rum. So, let's get to the half measure of simple syrup poured into a rocks glass. Muddle to get the flavor of the mint leaf out. And then one part blue curacao, shaken over ice. Two parts raspberry rum. And then we'll pour it into our muddled mint rocks glass here. Let's shake her up. All right. So, get that off there and here. And pour it into our rocks glass. And then we'll have our Andorian Ale. Classic, old-school Star Trek. Cheers, everybody. Let's give this a try. It's all right. Not bad. Cheers, everybody. Star Trek Beyond is directed by Justin Lin and written by Simon Pegg and Doug Young and stars pretty much everybody that has been in the last two Star Trek movies. I'm not going to go into them all. And now let's just get right into it. Star Trek Beyond is a great, fun, and uh, fast-paced action movie. I really enjoyed it. It follows along the simple story of the Enterprise and her crew answering a distress call, going to investigate, and hilarity ensues! I'm kidding. Of course things don't go as planned, and they all have to work together uh, to figure out a way out of their predicament. It's a very common Star Trek trope, but you know why they use it? It's because it works. It's familiar and it's, it's a solid uh, premise. The best part of this movie is the way the cast have taken their characters and really hit their stride. The chemistry between them has never been better in any of the previous two Star Trek movies in this new rebooted iteration. And what they did is at the beginning of the movie the cast gets split up pretty much into twos and to me that's the smartest thing they could have done. It gives each character a chance to shine and show and do what they do best. Now the best uh, example of this is is the interaction between Spock and Bones, played respectively by Zachary Quinto and Carl Urban. Their interaction is fantastic. It's one of the best parts of the movie, especially Carl Urban as Bones. He's terrific. He's really nailed this character. Um, plus, one of the other standout characters is a new character called Jayla. She's a badass, and she's played by... Sophia Butella, and she's just really good, a really good addition to the to the uh, story. And Chris Pine is back as Kirk, and he's taking this leadership role uh, to to another level. And it looks like he's had a lot of fun doing. 
Now, to me, this is all credit to the director, Justin Lin. And the reason I'm saying this is because Justin Lin has directed four out of the Fast and the Furious movies, and he's also directed Fast Five, which to me is the best out of the entire series. Now, I bring this up is because, because of these Fast and Furious movies, Justin Lin has really uh, learned how to direct an ensemble cast and, and let them all have their moments. I mean, this is where this movie shines. The other thing Justin Lin has done successful is to, is to make a Star Trek movie that is not only accessible to young people, but also stays true to the source material. I mean, this movie felt like uh, a long, expensive uh, episode of the original series, and that's not a bad thing. It's actually actually a really good thing. And the way he got he uh, the way I think he would get uh, the younger audiences um, involved and excited is by having this fast paced crazy action movie that goes along with this, you know, the nice old-school Star Trek feel. So this, of course, brings me to a couple of problems I have with the film. Very small problems. And I mentioned that Justin Lin has directed some of the Fast and Furious movies, which means he lends himself to extreme, sometimes borderline ridiculous, and even crossing the line of ridiculous action sequences. This film is no different. By the end of the movie, there are some pretty ridiculous outlandish action, action sequences. There are also there are also some strange editing choices and what I mean by that is that I sometimes got spatially confused as to where characters were, what they were doing, and how they got there and it just it, it, it kind of confused me every so often as to you know what, what it is they were doing. Um, but these things didn't really bother me as much because the movie is just so fast-paced and fun and energetic that I didn't really have much time to think about. It. Also, for a simple premise, the plot was way too complicated. There was way too much going on at certain points. And plus, if you're going to use a MacGuffin, which is a gamble in the first place, uh, you got to be prepared for audiences to question what this thing does, where it comes from, how it does what it does. But if you accept it's just a MacGuffin, then you can just let that fly on by and not, not have it not be a big deal. Um, plus, uh, I, I think Edris Silva, who plays the villain in the movie, I thought he was a little underutilized until the third act, where they kind of do this big reveal as to who he is. Um, and then I, I, I liked him much better. So if you're feeling that way during the movie, give it a chance, wait till the third act, and, and they'll explain some things, and you'll go, oh, I get it now. I, I get where he's coming from, um, and that's really how you use Ed Zilba because he really kicks it into high gear in that third act and is really good. All right, all in all, I really enjoyed this movie, and even though this is a really strong drink, it's kind of addicting, and by the magic of television, it wasn't great magic because you guys probably saw this glass sitting here earlier. Sleight of hand is hard, okay, everybody? Anyway, uh, look, I enjoyed this movie. It's fun, it's energetic, it's funny. Uh, all the cast, like I said, has really hit their stride and really knows where their characters are going, and it makes me excited for the fourth and hopefully the uh, fifth uh, movie in this franchise. Um, that having been said, I'm going to give this movie a solid four out of five drinks. I enjoyed it. I think it's one of the best Star Trek movies. It's definitely better than Into Darkness, and it's just as good as the original rebooted uh, Star Trek that came out, I think, in 2008. Um, it might even be in my top five of Star Trek movies of all time. I don't know. I'd have to give that a bit of a thought, but uh, initially, that's what I'm thinking. So let me know what your favorite Star Trek movie is. Uh, let me know if you like this movie. And uh, cheers, everybody. Have a drink on me. Please drink responsibly. Never, ever drink and drive because that's just stupid. Um, cheers.